Hi there, welcome to today's vlog. Today is the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November, we're all going back into lockdown. Um, well, we are here in England anyway. I know there's different rules in different parts of the UK, but certainly things feel like they've gone back a step. And I won't be commenting about US politics. It's never a good idea, but things aren't exactly wonderful for you guys either at the moment. Things are a little bit up in the air. But whilst the fog's there this morning, it serves as a useful metaphor to kind of how things can feel at times, doesn't it? Because Right now, I'd say over the weekend, today it feels like the fog's lifted a little bit. I've got to admit, I was really, really, really down Saturday and Sunday. My mental health had really taken a bit of a tanking because one thing that kept me going for the last three or four months, in fact probably longer into lockdown, if you, when I spoke about the live stream gigs we did back in May, was the fact I had this gig on the 13th of November and we'd already gone out and we'd played um, with a Libby Keys band the other week, but this was a chance to get out with my trio again, to get out making the music that I really love, the music that I practice for and work for, and boom, gone. But I have it on very good authority, through the main of the UK government, that musicians are still able to record, they are still able to uh, meet together, as long as they are socially distanced, and we can still broadcast, we can still do live streams. So we are working really hard to be able to come up with a live stream idea for November, and I had lots of phone calls about that yesterday which was great and there's also lots and lots of work going ahead for my job in Westminster about what we do for Christmas because if you haven't watched it, we've done jazz carols a couple of years now we won't be doing a jazz carols as such as we've done in the past but we will be putting something together with some jazz carols in and probably be doing some work with the recording that we had from last year because we did a radio broadcast so it can feel despondent at time and if you're in England if you're in the UK or in across Europe even at the moment and you're waking up with this these new lockdown restrictions are in the US and, you know, your situation. Um, that fog can feel like it's there, but the fog will lift and um, things will become clear. And uh, I'm positive that we're going to get uh, a decent outlook. So what I'm doing today, I've got a lot of teaching in, but what I'm working towards is trying to get my recording project underway. Trying to figure out how we can get this album that I've wanted to do for ages, this ballads album. And trying to get that done, trying to get that organised. Now when you're doing a recording project, you've got, and like any project, you've got to set yourself a budget and work within it. But I made some big mistakes on Jazz Vespers, I don't mind holding my hands up. We did a fantastic album, we booked an amazing studio, incredible musicians on the, on the recording, but I left no money for doing the promotional side of it. And I printed 2,000 CDs. Now we sold a lot of CDs, sold 1,500 of them, but I still have 500 CDs that I've moved to three different addresses in the last 18 months. So. Printing it on CDs maybe not something I'm going to be looking at, but let's talk about how you prepare that budget. The first thing is when you're preparing a recording budget is to book your studio. Now, good studios cost a lot of money. Good engineers cost a lot of money. 
mastering engineers cost a lot of money. You know, I recorded it at Lindhurst for the Jazz Vespers music and top, top, top range cost top, top, top money. And you're then going to be able to make that money back in sales or in pledges from Kickstarter. Next thing you've got to be able to budget are your musicians. And if you want good musicians, they cost money as well. Now, my overheads for musicians are not as high this time because I'm going to, only going to be using a quartet, going back to my jazz quartet. In fact, I haven't made a jazz quartet recording for a long time. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing this time, just keeping it to a quartet. How we distribute is going to be very, very different this time. There's no point, as I just said, doing it on CD. There's definitely going to be digitally streamed or on YouTube some way. I've got to figure out exactly how to do that. So the actual CD printing costs are there. However, if I decide to go and print something on vinyl, there's going to be the vinyl cost. And there is something that people like at a gig. Let me know in the comments below if you're the same. If you're selling something at a gig, people want something physical to be able to take away with them. They want to be able to take away, if it's not a CD, because no one's got a CD player anymore, it's something that they can yeah, like a memento of the gig. I don't know, I'm working on that, but I think CDs are dead. I mean, you know, hands up if you've still got a CD player that actually works, because I haven't anymore. And finally, something I didn't do on Jazz Vespers, and I regret it immensely, is not setting aside enough money for a PR budget. I didn't put enough into doing PR, mainly because I actually said in this vlog way back again, a really old vlog, most of you probably won't have seen it, so go back and watch it. I don't like necessarily marketing myself all the time. It, it's difficult. You know, you want the record to stand on its own two feet, but you've got to realise that all the greats have had to, in some way, if they haven't marketed it, the record company has to market it. If it's your baby, you don't really necessarily... Yeah, it's difficult to do, but you've got to put something into PR. So, studio costs, musicians' costs, you know, kind of distribution costs, and then PR costs. And, you know, that's why it's going to be going to be expensive to be able to do this album but I'm hoping and I'm sure it's going to be really really good and what I'm really glad about is that no matter what happens with the lockdown we're going to still be able to do that at some point. Now today is the 5th of November remember remember the 5th of November um, gunpowder plot. treason and plot they don't know I need to teach my kids more celebrating celebrating it's maybe not always a word was he actually captured today? Anyway, celebrate, commemorating the capture of Guy Fawkes and his co-conspirators who tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament. So what we do is we light a bonfire and normally have fireworks. I normally go to a fantastic firework party, but of course none are on today, so we're kind of doing it in our back garden. Oh, uh, we're going to light this, I hope. Oh. <laughs> 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 you can read light now, I'm going to take a photo of that. Can I get a picture? I'm living it now. Yeah. 